Welcome to Perfection's Clutch Training Lab. I've got the bench set up today so that I can demonstrate our approved technique for bleeding the clutch hydraulic release system on the Ford Ranger and Mazda B series of pickup trucks. Because the master cylinder mounts at an angle on this particular truck series, it's very easy for an air bubble to become trapped up here in the top end of the master cylinder. Can't be bled out very easily at all. The other air trap on these systems is the pressure line as it comes out of the master, goes down alongside the vehicle, comes up over the frame, crosses over, drops back down, and then finally connects to the slave. Right here in this section, it's very easy for an air bubble to become trapped there. As you're trying to bleed the system, the air bubble just sort of moves back and forth. We've got to get those air bubbles out. If there's any air in the system, what you will feel in the vehicle is you can't get it to release the clutch. You can't put it into first or reverse typically. The customer says, I have to shut the engine off to get it to go into first and reverse. We're going to show you how to bench bleed that system, test it while you're bench bleeding it, install it in the vehicle, check it prior to connecting it to the slave cylinder, and then finally gravity bleeding the system, getting the whole job done in just a few minutes. So we'll start with bench bleeding. Now to start the bench bleeding process, Find some place in your shop that allows you to hang the system up. We want to start with the reservoir at the top, the master cylinder. Notice the angle that the master cylinder is at. Now I've got the connections up. Air bubbles can come out, fluid can go down in. Now this is very, very important. Take the line and stretch it out. I've just stretched it on this post right here. The connection is down at the bottom. I tied it off with a piece of wire. If you've got a piece of pegboard in your shop or the end of a shelf section, Find some place that you can kind of stretch it out like this. So this is how we begin the bench bleeding. We'll remove the cap and the black follower that's inside there. And we'll fill the reservoir up with fresh DOT3 brake fluid. Fill it all the way up. Now already the system is starting to bubble. That's real good. Air bubbles coming out, fluid going down. Now how do you bleed it from here? This is the only tool we're going to use, a Phillips screwdriver. Don't take your new push rod and lock it in right now because that will lock in and it will stay, make it very, very difficult later on to install it in the vehicle. It's still bubbling. To make this system work, two techniques we're going to employ. Tapping on the line with the end of the screwdriver, starting from the bottom, working our way up, and we're going to take the screwdriver insert it into the piston. There's a spot where it'll go, just like the push rod. And then just short strokes. You don't have to push it far, you don't have to push it real hard. Just back and forth, back and forth. And tap on the line. This allows the air bubbles to come out and fluid to go back down in. This will take just a few minutes here and it'll be all bled out. We'll test it and then install it in the vehicle. All right, now how do you know when the system is bled, full of fluid, when you can't push on that screwdriver handle anymore? You push on it, and that screwdriver doesn't hardly move at all, and it's very, very hard, you're bled. Typically, we're going to see about one-eighth, no more than three-sixteenths of an inch piston movement as this bleeding process is completed. We've used about two-thirds of a reservoir of fluid, and we didn't spill any of it. Remember, do not use the push rod for this procedure. It just makes it too hard to install later. So we're going to go ahead and cap this off and we'll attach it to the pedal cluster assembly, check it over there, and then start the gravity bleeding process. Now I went ahead and installed it in the firewall and into the pedal cluster assembly. This can be kind of tricky. You might want to pay particular attention to how the old system was removed and then put the new one in. No sense to fight it. Sometimes there's little fingers on these uh, master cylinders that show you the correct orientation. Once it's installed though, you can go ahead and install the new push rod into the master cylinder. When you get it pushed in there and before you connect it to the slave cylinder, now you can tap on the clutch pedal and you can see just how little it moves. Remember, no more than 1 8 maximum 3 16 of an inch push rod or piston travel right here. This one's real firm. So we're going to go ahead and continue with the rest of the installation. Now from underneath the vehicle to make the installation, remove the shipping plug from the new improved upgraded connection system. We're just going to take the line. This would be the correct time to replace the O-ring 
and the sleeve if you bought a new master cylinder. Make sure the O-ring doesn't have any nicks in it because that's part of your sealing system. And I want to push it into the connection. One good click. Just push it in. Give it a little pull. Make sure it's locked in. We've also got a hang tag on that system to give you further instructions about how to service this. Now we're going to start the gravity bleed. Now I've already pre-filled the master cylinder reservoir. This would be a good time to have two people. One person up top to watch the reservoir, the fluid level as it drops, and I'll be underneath here. Now I've already connected a piece of tubing from the bleed screw into a container for the waste fluid. I want to open it up about one turn. Get a good flow of fluid running through the system there and keep an eye on the fluid up top in the reservoir. We want to flush out about one and a half reservoirs worth of fluid, maybe two, through this system. I've gone through a little over half. It's continuing to flow through the system. This purges out those air bubbles that are sitting in the slave cylinder. And here we go, one. Just go ahead and fill it up with that new dot three. Okay, it continues to flow down. Air bubbles are leaving. So now from underneath, when we get down to about that reservoir and a half level, I'll go ahead and close this bleed screw off. There we go. And remove this drain tubing here and we'll set the used fluid aside. Okay, now we're connected, we're gravity bled. You can check the reservoir level right now. Let's go ahead and release the clutch. Push down on the clutch pedal, get a nice firm feel, and there it is. 60 thousandths pressure plate lift off of the disc. This clutch will release, you can shift it with ease. You can bleed the Ford Ranger and Mazda series of trucks not a problem. Once you understand these basic steps, check your work, you can tackle this and you can beat it. If you have any other questions or challenges about this clutch or any hydraulic system, please call Perfection at 800-258-8312. Press extension 4 when you reach the computer answering system. Antonio or Steve will be glad to take your tech call and help you out.